Hello students, chapter number 15 of Negotiable Act dealing with bills in sets comprising of only two sections, section number 132 and 133, bills in sets. What exactly that is? Firstly, we have never got a question on this particular chapter yet in the CA inter exam. So, Section 132 talks about set of bills. So that means one thing is clear. This chapter is only talking about one instrument and that is bill, not the check, not the promissory note. So this is very important. You must consider over here from the heading of the chapter bills in sets. So what that is? 132 says bill of exchange may be drawn in parts. Get the word over here you are drawing the bill in parts just for your knowledge let me tell you what exactly it is generally three there is a bill normally what do we do we have already talked about the specimen of the bill we mention on the top the date the place the stamp value and obviously the words coming up i order mr x to pay rupees 500 after three months and signed by both the drawer as well as the toy for him to become as a sector. But when we are talking about in parts, so what we did? There is a bill, say this is one part, the other part, three parts. When you are making three parts, let's say, for example, this is a movie you may have watched, Bahubali, wonderful movie. It had two parts and in the first part ended with the dialogue. Why Katappa killed Bahubali? So you were aware of the fact, second part gonna come. So what we are getting? Are you gonna watch the second part first and the first part of the movie later on? Not at all. You have to go in order. So when you are making a bill in parts, question comes why? And the answer I'll say is, this happens basically in case of foreign trade. See, this particular act is of year 1881, that you know it. So at that time, when the business was done between the countries, it was a very risky business because there were always pirates, because the mode of transportation was ship, looting and all that. So for the intent was the safety and security. So for safety and security, what you will do, rather than having a bill in one part, you would gonna make some parts of that. Each part to be numbered. So that when you gonna join them, it goes in the perfect manner. So you make all the parts one, you may call it A, you may call it two, and then B, three or C. So there has to be some reference, you know. Each part to contain reference to other part. There has to be some, you know, coordination. Like when I teach you, I always go with harmonious construction. Like I said, this only talk about bills, not the note and the check. There are three instruments under section 13. So there has to be some reference. So each part to be numbered and continue payable only so long as others remain unpaid. Obviously, there are the parts and they will continue to remain payable only so long as others remain unpaid means you're gonna join them and then you're gonna get the payment but let's say if only with one part some payment is made are you gonna receive the payment from the two parts not at all all the parts together when you're gonna join them this will be termed as a set so what we got set is equal to all parts so that is a nomenclature we are deriving from the quotation what is set joining all the parts but the whole set constitutes only one bill whole set so that means one bill is equal to what whole set and what is whole set all the parts so you join all the parts and you get one bill 
joining all the parts termed as set and the whole set is termed as one by yes there is an exception now what is the exception all these three parts may be treated as three different bills so that is going to happen when when a person accepts or endorses different parts so you have to learn over here certain thing what that is see drawer when you are making the bill drawer has to sign who is making the bill it is a drawer so he will sign what all the parts but the drawer becomes liable only when he puts the signature that is he accepts so what we got acceptor to sign which part only one part not all the part only one part if signs all parts now here comes the exception when a person accepts or endorses different parts on all the parts you are making acceptance of the bill in favor of what different persons he and subsequent endorsers of such part are liable on such part as if it were a separate bill so you are accepting all the parts in favor of different persons like let's say we are calling mr draw as mr a so you going to accept in favor of mr a one part you signed in favor of a second b third c different persons here it will be constituted as three different bills so all these things you have to remember 132 set of bills what that is bill drawn in parts generally three each part must be numbered that is containing some reference for the other parts and the moment you join all the parts it becomes a set and the whole set to be termed as what one bill and they will be treated as different bills the moment it is accepted or endorsed in favor of different persons that is a sector has signed differently then they will become separate bills and now 133 talks about let's say there are three parts all the three parts we are presuming gonna be in position of one person but let's say they are in position of three different persons and all the three different persons are hdc if you can recall hdc holder in due course which we did under section number 9 who satisfied six conditions right possession entitlement consideration complete before maturity in good faith without knowledge of any defect etc so 133 says holder of first acquired part entitled to all means what go into the quotation it says as between hdc that means there are more than one hdc as between hdc of different parts of the same set so let's say here let's call it part number 1 is having with mr he is hdc b c all the three are hdc who will get the payment is just like one kid and there are three fathers that's not a good idea man he who first acquired to his part is entitled to other parts and money represented by bill so what it is trying to say like in accounts you have made the, you may have done the concept of fifo method first in first out so what it is saying he who first acquired to his part so you have to prove in the court of law that i obtained it first so whoever is getting the part on a earlier date is entitled to other parts and the money represented by bill because at the end of the day do not forget it's one bill the only exception to treat it as separate bill was when acceptance was given on all the parts in favor of different persons otherwise it is one bill the problem is it is in the hands of say three persons who will get the payment law says he who first acquired it to his part he will get the payment thank you